So anyone who's had persistent back pain knows that they don't sleep well when they're in pain. But what they also know is that when they don't sleep well, it hurts more the next day. And so what we tried to do with this study is provide some brain data to support this and also to answer the question, how does this happen? How does sleep affect pain? So we took uh, a group of undergraduates, healthy undergraduates, and brought them into the lab twice. They did the experiment twice. Under one condition, they slept a whole night in our lab. They came to the fMRI scanner and we recorded their brain activity while we gave them pain to the leg. And then they did the exact same experiment again, except they did not sleep at all the night before. And so we found some surprising changes. The sleep deprived brain seems to let more pain in and that corresponds to these increased regions. But at the same time, the regions that were reduced in activity were the same regions that normally would evaluate pain and coordinate the, the brain's pain killing response to alleviate pain. So it's our hope that this study will bring greater attention to the role of sleep in treatment, particularly for pain. If we can reduce the use of opiate narcotics, we can hopefully reduce addiction rates and the dependency on these drugs that in fact actually disrupt sleep. And the hope is that we can reduce hospital stay times. The one thing we've learned about sleep is that it touches every system in the body. So good sleep is not only good for pain, but it's good for the heart, it's good for the brain, it's good for metabolism and the immune system. So sleep represents this relatively easy, low cost, but also broadly effective prescription, not only for pain, but for a variety of diseases.